So <coughs> we have seen fractals, right? Uh, fractals are everywhere uh, in space and in time, right? If you look at the parities, they also form as self-similar patterns. So if I switch to two years or one year, and if I just hide it this one, you wouldn't know whether it's two-year fluctuation or five-year fluctuation. It is self-similar. Do you understand the point? Uh, then this American physicist was bothered by, by this fuss about fractals. Fractals, where is the physics? Or shall I say that he is asking what the fractal is going on? So, <laughs> why all the fuss about fractals? Physical Review Letters complains that every third submission seems to concern fractals in some way or another. Corporate research labs such as Exxon's and IBM's expend perceptible fractions of their entire basic research budgets on the study of fractal systems. Perhaps a half dozen conferences during the past year were devoted to the subject. Why? This is 1986. Uh, then there are something in between. Uh, it's uh, three, three pages of a viewpoint. So it ends with this one. Uh, he has nothing against fractals. Don't get him wrong. He did important uh, contributions to, those, to that science. And that's, that's exactly what he's looking for. What is the organizing principle? Without that underpinning, the understanding, much of the work on fractals seems somewhat superficial and even slightly pointless. And this really hurts me, <laughs> myself. It is easy, too easy, to perform computer simula simulations upon all kinds of models and to compare the results with each other and with real-world outcomes. But without organizing principles, the field tends to decay into a zoology of interesting specimens and facile classifications. I wonder if our class uh, made you feel that way. No? I hope not. Uh, despite the beauty and elegance of the phenomenological observations upon which the field is based, the physics of fractals is in many ways a subject waiting to be born. Okay? 1986. Uh, then in 1987 comes this paper, Self-Organized Criticality, an explanation of 1 over F noise. And inside this paper, at some point, Per Buck, the Danish super awesome physicist, says that uh, the physics of fractals and this reference for is to Kadanov's paper. You know this one. Okay. The physics of fractals could be that they are the minimally stable states originating from dynamical processes which stop precisely at critical point. Of course, this sentence doesn't make any sense right now to you. Uh, so at this point, I will stop uh, this presentation. We will continue this in a moment. Uh, not in a moment, after 30 minutes maybe. So I want to explain you what he means by that sentence. Uh, and the best way to understand Per Buck's idea the idea of self-organized criticality is his model of sand piles, okay? So let's say you are not in Ankara and somewhere where you have sea and sand, okay? Can you imagine? Now, you start pouring sand and what happens is that, okay, this is the end point. Let's start from here. You keep pouring sand, it grows, it grows, and grows, and reaches some uh, slope, 
okay, at which, um, so let's say it reaches this state. In this state, you, you can imagine that sometimes you put one grain and it topples down, right? Sometimes, uh, so this is an event of size one, let's say. Okay? Are you following? Let's say every once in a while you put one grain, it topples, but that one also topples the other way. Does it make sense? So you have two topplings. Do you have any questions so far? An event of size two. And every once in a while you see that suddenly a huge portion of sand topples, right? It creates an avalanche, right? So uh, they actually, after a lot of simplifications, that's the uh, main uh, trick in his bag of tricks, in Per Buck's bag of tricks. S simplify. I mean, simplify as, as simple as possible, but not simpler, okay? So the simplest model is, cons uh, it consists of grains, okay, grids, and each grid, so imagine this is a, ta a table and you are going to pour sand, and, but it's a special kind of sand. So let's say each uh, cell has uh, some number of grains. I am specifically writing one uh, between zero and three for the following reason. Because the rule says that if after placing a new, so let's say this was three, two, one, three, one, something like this. Once you put the next grain here, this one becomes four, right? This one becomes four. And the rule says that when a cell becomes four, it, it is no more stable and it will topple to its four neighbors, okay? So what will happen next is this will be zero, okay? This will be three, right? This will be two, uh, this will be four, this will be two. So what will happen is that this time this will be unstable and that will topple. Does it make sense to everyone? Yes? So, yes? Uh, actually, it was like this, right? 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, right? You put just one cent, but that makes this one 4. No, no, that 4 wants to be reduced to 0. Do you see 0 here? So that's the model, so it's oversimplified. So he assumes that all that toppling somehow, imagine 4 grains unstable, they topple to all the places, and even the bottom one moves to somewhere in the neighborhood. Yes? So after this one happens, uh, this is the new state, and you can see that this one will topple, the four will topple, and it will stop at a certain point, right? Uh, do you have any questions so far? No. What happens at the edge? At the edge, nothing interesting happens, just you can imagine that the grains, the ones that should topple uh, here just falls off the table. Does it make sense? Uh, why do we need that? Because this is a system, so we are going to do the following. We are going to choose uh, an n by n grid, and we will keep placing uh, new grains, and they will create avalanches. 
and avalanches eventually will reach to edges from where they will fall off okay so we will not have like bigger and bigger place everywhere there will be just zero one two or three because if it's four it will topple does it make sense so <coughs> this simple program uh, creates some amazing uh, simple model creates some amazing behavior so let's talk about the code are you with me so this is the uh, number of cells in each dimension uh, the system is two-dimensional okay then this is uh, the total number of uh, what should we call call the placing of a new grain number of new grains of sand Okay, and uh, this gives you a random number between between two and uh, n minus one, right? Why are you so late? Ah, okay, okay. So. <coughs> This uh, this part will create random sites to deposit new grains. Do you have any questions here? So it will be like, actually, uh, there is a better way of doing this. Uh, I realized it. It's rand random integer between. Uh, I hope I will not break the code. Z 2 and n minus 1. And how many? t versus 2. So it will be two uh, columns of numbers between 2 and n minus 1. We don't place a new grain at the edge edges. Why? Uh, I will just assume that the 1 and n are already outside of my table, okay? And I will keep them 0, okay? That will make the code shorter, nothing interesting there, okay? Do you have any questions? Hmm? Again, these are random numbers between uh, start with random initial condition uh, between 0 and 3 any questions for those who came late let me just quickly summarize what we are doing we are taking an n by n grid and let's say you have such a position such a case so if I place another grain here it will become four and it will topple it is like four grains are unstable they will topple to their neighbors so this will be zero this will be three this will be three this will be four this will be zero so then next toppling is here okay that's what we are coding okay uh, and actually the main part is very short this so here we need to define the toppling function so each time this function will take the state of the system the random sites that we are placing the new grain okay and the number of sites uh, number of cells in each dimension those are the inputs and the output is the new state after the avalanche happened okay uh, the properties of avalanche how big it is does it make sense and the number of toplings 
during one avalanche. So this is a toppling function. Let's actually investigate what this one may, does. So this function takes in the state of the system and the n and m is... You, can you tell me what n and m is? The coordinates where you put the new grain, right? So you start with uh, a definition of avalanche to be zero everywhere. So avalanche is zero everywhere. Then basically here parent and children will correspond to like the parent will be the one that will be toppled in the next run and the children will be uh, the ones that are created unstable that, that become unstable because of that toppling I don't know if I did it incorrectly okay so this is uh, parents are the ones that are going to topple and of course parent site it starts with n and m okay that's where you will put the new grain and uh, you can see that if you look at the state we increase the state at n m site by one okay uh, Put the new grain in site and m, okay, and set count to zero. So while the number of parents is bigger than zero, okay, so this loop will break when you have no more unstable points okay no more unstable grains so at the beginning the children number is zero then what happens here let's see uh, th this MP defines the number of parents going from one to the parents number if that state is bigger than zero then what does it mean the parent site will topple if it is unstable does it make sense? once it topples it's one event right so we should count that event as the new event okay and the avalanche will be counted uh, as all such uh, events okay so wherever that event happened, the avalanche will increase by one. Remember, the avalanche was zero everywhere. So the avalanche will, uh, will calculate how many toplings happened at a certain site. It starts with zero. Every time you have toppling, avalanche at that point increases. Do you have any questions? <coughs> and then let's see what this one does. Can you tell me? Yes, it was four, uh, or sometimes it could be five, maybe two of its neighbors actually uh, toppled at the same time to itself. Uh, but never mind, it goes to, uh, it will diminish by amount of minus four. So maybe we can say remove grains from toppled site okay this one just makes sure that you are not right at the edge because we assume that the edges are already the outside of the table okay if you are not over there then you have children so each toppling creates children four children right and 
uh, the sites of those children are defined as parent site plus one, for example. This is the one to the right of the parent. So, a child is born to the right. Okay? And, of course, you need to update the state of that, that place, right? This, you, you take minus 4 from the center, you put it to the right. And you put it to the left. And just let me write here left. Above. Right? And below. So, after parents are all toppled, right? After all of them are toppled, then you will make uh, the parents number children number so the children will become parents the next toppling regime does it make sense to everyone yes so uh, let's now run this code yes tell me Yes, because it's X and Y of the parent site. Yeah, but um, N and M are already the coordinates, right? Yes. So both X and Y have two coordinates? No, it's 1, 1 to 2. Yes. So it's it's just... Oh, well, it assigns, yes. I have assigned both the columns N and M. Like N, M, N, M for both the columns. Ah, no, no, it's not like that. Okay, let's check. A, 1, 2, 1, 2, right, 1, 2, we'll make A this one. You thought that it's 1, 2, 1, 2, like this. Okay. That's something you learned today about MATLAB, right? Okay, uh... <laughs> So let me actually run this, and while I'm running, I will arrange these windows in the nice fashion, hopefully. No? Maybe like this. Yes. Okay. So you can see that you have tiny tuples in general. Right? So, <clears throat> do you think that it will go on forever like this? Any ideas? So far it's nothing interesting, right? Uh, but it will become interesting if we watch it, if we don't watch every toppling. But let's, let's do the following. First of all, do you have any questions so far? Are you, uh, do you understand what is happening here? We are, we are watching the avalanches. Each time I put a new grain, uh, if it creates at all toppling, sometimes it doesn't create even toppling, right? It just, you put another grain on the cell that has two in it. So nothing happens. But, yes. Uh, of course. Uh, uh, no, no, not at all. Uh, we haven't, that's the point. We haven't seen uh, the effect yet. Uh, so let's remember. Let's remember, and this will be also nice for you. So fractals are everywhere. And then there was this question, where is physics, right? And, and this guy answered it. Maybe the physics of fractals is that they are the minimally stable states originating from dynamical processes which stop precisely at the critical point. So we, we want to uh, analyze these toplings uh, to understand what Per Buck is saying. Okay, what he, he means by minimally stable state, why at all they should correspond to fractals. We are not there yet. 
So, but we are very close. We just need to open send file version 2. There it is. And this one, can you see that here th there is just uh, two different lines? One of them is set maximum count to zero. And then if the new count is bigger than maximum count, so what we will look at it now, not every avalanche, but we will look at it whenever the avalanche becomes even bigger. The new best avalanche. So, and we will see that it quickly goes to big avalanches. So you can see, you can watch here, 590, do you see? Something interesting is going on, right? Good. So, uh, records, yeah. yeah. So, let's see if the even bigger one is. It. So, do you, can you tell me what these colors mean? Yes, but what are we watching here? What is it? Hmm? <laughs> it looks like fractals already, right? But we will come to that in a moment. So, what is it? What is this that we are seeing? What we are? Hmm? Like a topography map or the? So, what we are seeing here is the avalanche created by putting just one grain. We we put just one grain, right? And then it creates toplings that actually ro turn back and topple again. It's so big that, you know, like these yellow areas means that th those sites actually toppled more than once. It means that you create an avalanche, it goes and it creates av bigger uh, events there and it actually ro comes back and topples the original site one more time. Do you see how big this event is? Hmm? It self-activates, yes. It's, it self-sustains and it's, it creates huge event, right? Do you have any questions so far, right now? So, the point is that, uh, it, let's run this one more time and actually if you write bigger numbers, then it takes actually longer time to get to bigger pictures. So what's happening here? Uh, the system actually, we just see the big ones, right? But there are many small ones going on. And there are big ones. So there are catastrophic events, there are ordinary events, there are very, very small events. All of them are present. And actually the state, so right now if I stop this and if I erase this condition, like show me all, then what we will see? Hmm. Should I also? No. It it is always at the random site. Uh, I I couldn't figure this one out. Why? Uh, so, what I will do is, I will erase this one and this one. So, let's run this. Okay. Do you see that sometimes nothing happens? Actually, let's do it bigger than zero because that's bad for your eyes. So, every time something at all happens, we will see it. So, do you see? Big events, small events, huge events. Do you see what's happening here? Each time I put a grain. How did we get here? That's the point. Okay. So how did we get here? And to 
tell you how we got here, I, I actually want to do one more version of the code. But do you have any questions so far? Yes. Okay, uh, the, the difference, uh, right now there is no difference left, but the difference was the fact that we, in the first code, we watched the system initially at all the stages. You, you couldn't see any big event at the beginning, right? So let's go to the first code one more time. Just let's run it, and you will see small events, right? But if we wait for long enough, Remember, these small events are creating tuplings, right? Which will create like craters there, like something happened there and something happened in the neighborhood. So they will be related and the next time you put something, these two regions actually will topple, probably. Maybe not, but the system self-organizes itself in such a way that the big events also become possible. So, uh, right now, it's still not there. It's far from there. So, if I, do, I... I'm doing it with 100... Like, let me do it with 50. Maybe it will reach there faster. Uh, do you see an increase in the sizes of the avalanches? It stays there. What, what do you mean? Uh, so why let's. Ah, this is just the avalanche because of. Uh, we are not. Okay, let me plot you the state itself. We are not plotting the state itself. Okay, if you look at the state, you can see nothing. It's just a noise. Are you ready? This. You will see no pattern here. You understand? It's just zeros and threes. And sometimes you put somewhere another grain and it changes many things, but it's still zero and three. And so what you were seeing is actually the difference between the states. Okay? Mm -hmm. the, do you see the there are big changes too right now are you following all this so uh, if you uh, want to start connecting things let me just tell you that no no I will not tell you that no so let me do one more step what this one does Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you look at the state, you can see nothing special right now. This state does it? Do you? Would you expect that this state would create? some beautiful structure if you put another grain. It just looks like a noise that will just do something. So how could we uh, get that information out of this noise? How, how can we uh, see the potential in this guy? Here's what we do. We actually take a snapshot right now Okay, and we place the grain at each point. Each time we measure the avalanches. Okay, I put it here, avalanche. I put it here, avalanche. I put it here, nothing happens. I, mean, I do it for every point, and then I sum up all the avalanches. Did you follow? 
So that will give me the potential of avalanches. What might happen? Why would you stop them? Hmm? Because uh, what would you like to do to them? No, Multiply mean, them? If you, if you sum them, mm -hmm. you're sort of seeing if events are happening to them. Mm -mm. No, if uh, I'm saying that, I understand all this no, no, I know, I know, I, I'm just claiming that, okay, the next grain can, can fall at a, any point randomly. What is the uh, probability of each site toppling? How would you find that probability? You would do it for everyone. And, and then sum the avalanches divided by the number of sites. Yes, I'm just not dividing by number of sites. I'm just summing them up. Does it make sense? Everybody? Yes. So, uh, this is... By the way, I will do something super cool here. Okay. <laughs> At least to me it sounds super cool. So before I topple, before I, I make this change, I will keep the memory of this state. Like state was at this point. And I will do all these topplings. Is it here? Uh, this is the wrong code. Uh, four maybe, I hope. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, remember the state before toppling. Are you with me? Yes, tell me. Can you repeat? You, you, I put grains. No, no, it's from it's the from the ground state. Very good question. So I I choose some state, and I do those perturbations to the original state, and watch the avalanches. Okay. So. So. Uh, so I'm doing the analyze, or. What do you call to? Unchain someone's potential. There was a nice word for it. Unleash. Yes. Is is it written like this? Uh, the potential of state zero. Okay. And uh, plot it. Plot the potential. Remember, this is before toppling happened. Then we actually plot, we will plot the avalanche. And now we will unleash the potential of the state after the avalanche happened. Un unleash potential after avalanche. Are you following? Everyone? Yes? Plot potential after avalanche and plot potential before avalanche. Okay? So, let's run this code and So, I put 150 so it will run slower. So, do you see the potential before and after? This is before, this is after, and this is the avalanche. Okay? Uh, right now, uh, so for example, let's look at this one. It had the potential here, do you see? 
and it had avalanche there but it went away so it had a potential here but avalanche came here maybe it corresp ah come on this one corresponds to this one and afterwards it's gone do you see so you create potentials and then they are released but while they are releasing they create new potentials do you see this is released but it creates new potentials around it it's like bubbles forming bursting and forming new bubbles does it make sense so this is the minimally stable states that uh, Per Buck was talking about initially the bubbles are small because we are not self-organized to criticality yet and those bubbles as they burst they create sometimes they create bigger bubbles and once the bigger bubble bursts can you see that there are so many potential now as the run continues do you see so for example this one stays there even afterwards because that potential is not unleashed it's not released so uh, for example this is very similar to uh, earthquake dynamics right people actually can create uh, can expect can create maps of expectations of earthquakes right and mm, probably something like this is used there do you see that now you have many potentials everywhere it is formed these are the minimally stable states okay i hope uh, it, it uh, everything made sense so let's go to Perbach's paper and it's over here uh, may maybe we can have a break at this point let's have a break